Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson 15, we will focus on relative and absolute cell referencing and basic summary functions. All right, so I have a data set here from an ice cream store chain that consists of profit values from five different stores across four quarters. I wanna try and find some summary statistic data, so let's try doing that. To find the lowest profit value in quarter one, I'm going to use a function called min. I'm going to select all five profit values for quarter one and press enter. For highest, my function will be max, which stands for maximum. Average will use the function average. And total will use the function sum. Now I want to do the same types of calculations for quarters two, three, and four. And the easiest way to do this is to actually drag the formula across to the corresponding cells. So to do this, drag from the lower right-hand corner and Excel will automatically fill in the corresponding highlighted cells. For all these summarization functions, we've actually been using something called relative cell referencing. And let's take a closer look at what this is by examining a couple cells. So this one here, we're going to look specifically at the formula, and we can see that it only is referencing data from column B. If we move over one cell to the right, where we drag the formula across, which is essentially copying pasting the formula, we can see that now the function is only referencing data from column C. So this is essentially what relative cell referencing is. It is whenever you drag a formula over or down, it'll automatically change the column letter or row number to the correct corresponding um, number or letter. Relative cell referencing is super useful and it's the most commonly used type of referencing um, when working with Excel. All right, so now let's work on finding the three highest and lowest profit values. You may remember before we used max to find the highest value, but there's actually another function we can use called large. In this case, I'm going to highlight my entire data set and put a one since we're looking for the highest value. Now large is a bit of a different function because it requires two sets of information. First is your um, array of data you want the function to use, and then next is your rank. So in this case, I'm going to use a three since I'm looking for my third highest profit value. For the lowest profit, it's almost the same case. We're going to use a function called small. This also requires two sets of information with the second one being the uh, rank number. So in this case, I'm going to use a two since I'm looking for the second uh, lowest profit value. Let's move on to absolute cell referencing now. Here I have a simple sales order with the unit price and quantity for each product, so I can easily calculate the subtotal. For tax, I'm going to multiply my subtotal by the tax rate cell and then drag the formula down. Here you can see I have some problems. I have two cells with error messages and some strange numbers, so let's see what's going on. In this first error cell, I have the subtotal multiplied by cell E4, which is my tax column header here, which isn't what I want. So the problem here is actually with the relative cell referencing. When we are dragging our formula down the tax column, it's no longer just referencing cell E3, it's moving down to all the corresponding cells. In this case, we always want to multiply our subtotal by the specific cell E3, so we have to lock that cell in place in our formula. To do this, I'm going to click on my first cell in my tax column and click before the E3 and press the F4 key. Here you can see it adds dollar signs, which acts as a way to lock that specific cell in place. I'm going to press enter and then I'm going to drag down to fill in the rest of the cells and you can see that already looks a lot better. I'm going to leave you guys to fill in the rest of the sales order. 
Now you might be wondering where the F4 key is located on a keyboard, and I have this picture here for your reference. Most of the time it is located towards the top of the keyboard, just as in this picture. Let's go over one more time how to use the F4 key before we wrap up for today. I'm going to go to the first cell in my tax column here and delete the current formula I have and type it back in as my subtotal times my tax rate. Now I want to change this relative cell reference to an absolute cell reference, and to do that all I'm going to do is press the F4 key, and you can see in my equation bar at the top those dollar signs are added to lock the tax rate cell into place. That concludes our video for today. Thank you so much for watching and learning about absolute and relative cell referencing and basic summary functions. Tune into the next video where we will cover mixed cell referencing.